Welcome to another episode of Telly's favourite ever tech show. Wow, let's just have a round of applause for that. Yes, it's the Gadget Show. Is that quality? It's better quality all round. And this week, John's got an iPhone battle on his hands. Can you tell me any difference between the phones? No, the quality's not as great as this one. The both for me, they look the same. Amy and Otis are on a futuristic shopping spree. Yeah, not bad. You look good, don't you? Yeah. How on earth did you come about inventing this? We grab breakfast with YouTube veteran Charlie McDonald. 330 million views. That's just mad, isn't it, really? And John and Otis go up against a pro chambermaid in a down and dirty cleaning challenge. I tend to do some hoovering every year, whether it needs it or not. <laughs> but as ever, we're starting off with Gadget Help, where we try to solve one of your gadget problems. Yes! Wow. The cries for gadget help have been coming thick and fast this series. We are here to help. And this time it's a pair of break dancers who need our technical support. Hi Gadget Show. I'm Silence. And Steven. We need some help finding some tech to help us with practicing and rehearsals and whatnot. In public places. There you go. Yeah. What tech solution can you provide for us that could help with this problem? Okay, thank you. Stephen and Silence had a budget of £200 and wanted us to find a sound system that would allow them to listen to the same tunage whilst practicing their moves. Once we'd done our research, we summoned them to Gadget HQ to show off our own moves. Man, huh? Almost made me wanna, but ne never Not again. quite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, welcome. Uh, we feel we've understood your brief. We've each got a solution that we think is best suited to solving your issue. I kick things off with run phones. Okay, guys, I want you to put these straight on. These are the run phones headbands. So run phones Bluetooth are quite simply washable wicking exercise headbands with headphones built in over the ears. You can hear the music? Yes. So the good thing about these, yeah, yeah. is you've got no wires, you've got no in-ear bulky things that are going to fall out your ears. Yeah. It's all there, That's hidden right. inside a headband. They sync with any Bluetooth-enabled device and can stream music from up to 30 feet away. And the battery lasts a respectable 13 hours. It is good. A solid offering there from young Amy, but I had a gadget that I was sure would fit their brief perfectly. Now, my solution is to harness the power of radio and give you your own small miniature radio station. An FM transmitter coupled with a Bush portable DAB FM radio. There's a portable radio here. Let's try it. You simply connect the FM transmitter to your smartphone and you can start broadcasting a preset playlist from your phone on an empty FM frequency. Then just tune the Bush portable radio to that frequency and boom! Your own little radio station. As long as every member of the breakdance crew has their own portable FM radio, they can all listen on headphones and practice together. The FM transmitter plugs neatly into any mobile phone or tablet, but the quality can depend on your location. And the range was a big plus point for silence. Tell me when it's not. No, it's still good. What did they think overall? It's a good idea. I like it. Cheap. It's easy and everyone can use it. That's a good thing. It's affordable. Two exemplary offerings there, but as always, the best has been saved till last. Fellas, let me introduce you to the UE Roll Bluetooth speaker. The UE Roll is a waterproof, rugged speaker that pumps out crisp 360 degree sound. And the cool thing about these is that you can pair up with friends who also have a UE Roll via a smartphone app. Okay, it works up to 65 feet, so if you've got a routine that starts at opposite ends of the room, yeah. you know what I mean, you're still, you're still listening. On the back you can see some military grade bungee cord <laughs> there, yeah, so you can hang it off anything. I was thinking, you know, you might want to just hang it, sir, yeah, <laughs> you know, for the... In the cameo. You don't want to... No. cameo. Oh. No. Okay, <laughs> okay. Much, I'll tell you what, let me turn up the music and you guys test them out. Okay. Yeah. Just leave it on the floor. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you kick it while you're doing the flares. Yeah, see? How long's the battery life on? Nine hours. You get nine hours from one charge. So. Okay, that's good. I like the fact that you can separate the sounds as well, mm -hmm. like panning and everything. Else. I mean, I think they're fairly versatile, and what I like is that they're rugged. 
What do you think of the sound quality, boys? Yeah, the sound is pretty good for, especially for wireless devices. Yeah. This sound pretty good. Okay. Especially when you've done yeah. them on the floor. Yeah. yeah the sound is real good. Mm -hmm. So it is something that you see as usable in your lifestyle. Definitely, in your definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Real good. Okay. Good idea. That's what I want to hear. So with the boys having danced to all of our devices, it was time for us to reconvene to find out which of us had won them over. So, gentlemen, you've handled our proposed gadget problem solutions and you've had a chance to play with them, try them out. Have you reached a decision on which one you want to keep? We have, we have. Would it be my super cool Runphone's Bluetooth headbands? Or would my FM transmitter and radio win? Or would they go for my loud and proud speaker setup? Boys, it's over to you. All right, then, so the gadget that we're going to go for is. Amy. Yes! Oh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for that! Enjoy them, boys! <laughs> yeah, I, I fulfilled the brief, that's what happened. No yeah. wires, no noise, it's all in their head, they can dance away. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good choice. How do you actually try this break dancing? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in desperate need of our help, then why not apply to be on the show? Yep, we're ready and waiting to help you find the perfect gadget. All you need to do is record a 30-second video explaining your story, the type of gadget you're after, and your budget. Then log on to our website at channel5.com slash gadget show, upload your video, get more details and those all-important T's and C's. We look forward to hearing from you. It's nearly time for the break, but first, it's time for one of these. Like lying in a hammock, like splashing in water, then you'll love the hydro hammock. Patent pending, of course. When inventor Ben Hearn over-ordered some high tensile super strength marine quality canvas, he thought, why don't I make a really deep hammock out of it and then fill it with water? You can string the hydro hammock up virtually anywhere, and as long as you go for a package, including the portable water heater, in any conditions. He's loving it, they're loving it, and they're eating melted chocolate in it. Hang on, this is getting a bit weird. Moving on. Right, part one is all done and dusted, but fear not, because after the ads... Yeah! John poses a question about the new iPhone. Can you tell much difference between them? No. 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 Otis tries on a techie suit. Not bad. You look good, don't you? Yes. And the boys clean up. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of The Gadget Show. Number one. No, John, number two. <laughs> Next up, John's asking an important question about one of the most popular gadgets of the moment. Do we really need the iPhone 6S? Yes, there's a new version of Apple's fastest-selling iPhone ever, a device that saw them make record profits. Not only does that mean some slick new videos about snazzy new features from Apple, it means there's nearly a hundred million people wondering whether to upgrade from the iPhone 6. So today I'm going to settle the matter by pitting the new 6S against the 6 in a series of rigorously scientific tests. And to help show you the results, I've connected the phones to these displays. The headline new feature is a screen which summons different functions depending on how hard you press it. And this is the subject of scientific test number one. 3D touch claims to let you do the things you do most often faster. So I've set up a 6 versus 6S race against the clock. On the iPhone 6, I snapped a selfie, then sent it as a message to my mate, and the whole process took 11.9 seconds. Let's see if the 6S can beat it. Ah. Taking a selfie is now a one-touch job, and sending a message to a recent contact is faster too. 10.7 seconds! So the iPhone 6S really is quicker, and with over a million selfies taken a day, its contribution to human time-saving is immense. Well, now I'm going to use science to test the actual speed of the phone itself. The 6S has twice the RAM of the 6 and an upgraded processor. 
To measure the effect of this extra brain power, I'm using a piece of software called Slingshot. This runs a high-intensity graphic sequence and precisely measures the maximum frame rate a phone can display. The higher, the better. I ran the test four times while showing each phone's screen on my displays. The 6S was always able to show marginally more frames per second for any given graphic. What surprised me was that the performance of both phones halved when they were hot, but overall there was a clear winner. The 6S has a significantly higher overall score than the 6, making the 6S a must-have upgrade for iPhone gamers. And I think most people will notice the difference in everyday use as well, with speedier graphics and apps opening quicker. Next, my favourite, the camera. The S has more megapixels on the front and the rear. To test them scientifically, I took a low-light shot, a picture of a colourful archway, a selfie and a high-contrast snap of a canal bridge. And then I carefully analysed the differences. And the low-light shots, well, this is the 6, slightly yellowy. Um, the 6S, a more natural look. A better colour balance, I think, so I think it has the edge there in low light. There was nothing between them in the high contrast shot, and while the 6S selfie was brighter thanks to its screen-based flash, it wasn't any sharper. Moving on, the sort of shot of this Birmingham archway. Well, here I think the 6S does have an advantage. There's more detail in that archway and the brickwork there. So the photography test is the first one where the 6S doesn't have an overwhelming advantage. There are still slight benefits though, in particular more detail and contrast in the normal shot and uh, a little bit better colours in low light. Finally, a hot topic for all smartphones, battery life. The 6S has a slightly smaller battery than the 6 and I wanted to find out how that affected its stamina. I've run a battery analysis programme by Geekbench on both phones. This simulates intensive tasks that run the batteries down. And overall, the iPhone 6S has a slightly better score. Both phones were brand new and running the same operating system. And in fact, the 6S lasted 5 minutes and 10 seconds longer. So, science dictates that while the 6S isn't streets ahead, it's noticeably better than the 6 in all areas. But I wanted to see how this translated to the real world. I've come to the city centre here in Birmingham, and my aim is a simple one, to find out whether people in Birmingham can tell the new phone from the old one. Because whatever the science says, if they can't tell them apart, maybe there isn't any point in upgrading. Sir, we're testing iPhones. So one's a 6 and one's a 6S, yeah? Can you tell much difference between them? OK, nice smile. First, I wanted to see if the people of Brum could tell the difference between each phone's camera. Let's go. I asked them to take a photo on each device and didn't tell them which was which. Some preferred the photos of the standard 6. That one. That one looks sharper. One, yeah, I think that one looks better. Better quality. While others couldn't tell them apart. Yeah. Can you tell any difference between the phones? No. No. No, I can't. But a narrow majority did think the 6S took better pictures. The picture quality on this one is brighter than this one. It definitely looks sharp, I think. Right? Yeah, this yeah. one. Down you go for that one. That was a nicer photo of you. <laughs> <laughs> However, the result was less clear when I asked the public to play a game. Smashing into them. No, yes. That one's oh, a... my God. Ooh, <laughs> you drive normally? No. <laughs> well, for me, they look the same. Everything is the same. Ooh. It was a 50-50 split between preferring the 6. This one seems a lot more, the controls are a lot more smoother. Let's see which one it is. And it is... It's the ordinary iPhone, iPhone 6. IPhone. And the 6S. This one's better. That's yeah, better. And it is... Yes. Yes. My day's investigation was over. The 6S certainly doesn't trounce the 6, but thanks to new features like 3D touch and marginal improvements to its performance, it is a better phone. Although you won't always notice the difference. So, to answer my original question, is there any point in the iPhone 6S? The answer's yes. Thank you, John. Next, it's our versus challenge. This week, John and Otis are involved in a mucky and murky cleaning showdown. It was 8am at what is literally the newest hotel in Birmingham, the super posh Genting Resorts World. 
where our mission was to use gadgets to do a better cleaning job than the housekeeping head honcho. I'll be straight with you. We were way out of our depth. Dishes, John. That would be my area of expertise. I quite like unloading and loading the dishwasher. Yep. I mean, and also, I mean, I, I tend to do some hoovering every year, whether it needs it or not. <laughs> but on the whole, yes, our house is filthy. <laughs> Our rival was the sensei of spick and span, Carly. Ah, Carly. Carly. How are you? Fine, thank you. Love to see you. OK, mm. so any tips for us? Uh, quickness, efficiency. It's a physical job. Okay. Really? Then, uh, I mean, how long does it take to do a room? 28 minutes. OK, well, you see, we've got tech on our side, so we could probably half yeah. that. If you're going to do it properly, yeah. then, I don't know, no. Really? All right. Mm, all right, you're obviously confident in yourself. Very Yeah, battle lines have been drawn, <laughs> and all I can do is wish you good luck. I think I'll we'll need it. I wish you more. Yeah? Oh, oh thank right. you. Very kind. <laughs> I don't think she meant it in a nice way. <laughs> We'd be cleaning five rooms each, and while the challenge was about speed, we couldn't just rush through and bodge it. No, because the general manager would inspect all ten rooms at the end and disqualify anyone who'd done a bad job. The challenge would begin at 10.30 sharp once all the guests had left. So we had just enough time for a shakedown of our tech. A trolley full of grime-busting stuff yes. here. I think um, I'm really looking forward to trying the robotic mop. I mean, we're used to robotic vacuum cleaners. This one, I think, if anything, should be even more useful. It promises to autonomously pick up dirt, dust and hair from shiny surfaces such as bathroom floors. Wow, you know, it's funny you mention robot vacuums because I, as yet, have never used one. So I'm looking forward to trying out the oh. uh, Nito bot vac. This laser-guided dust buster scans the room to create a map of obstacles, meaning it should clean efficiently without bumping into stuff. We'd also packed a handheld vacuum that uses UV rays and claims to reduce bed bug infestations by 90%. An electric duster that did a brilliant Rod Stewart impression. And a UV torch, which will reveal those grubby stains that the naked eye, thankfully, can't see. Yes, and at the low-tech end, how about this, eh? Well, what's what's about this? Uh, it's a reinvention of the loo brush. Okay. It's the loo blade. And it's got a, a silicone eight-blade pointy arrow thing at the end. It's yep. non-stick and it's antimicrobial. Ah. Yes. Though, frankly, I was hoping not to find any guests microbials. Our tech was set. The guests had left. Some of them had left the right mess, to be honest. And the challenge was ready. Carly, mm. what do you reckon your chances are? I think you might beat me as there's two of you, yeah. but in the overall, I will win. Oh, really? Yeah. On quality. Yeah? Yes, quality. Quality, mm. not quality quantity. Is my, yeah? Quality <laughs> is my middle name. Mm. Actually, it's, it's Kwame. It, they begin the same, but they finish very differently, which is... Should we just get on with it? Yes! And let's go, let's right. go, let's go. Cleaning challenge to commence in three, two, one, go! Oh, run. Housekeeping! To cover ground as quickly as possible... Housekeeping! John and I went our separate ways. Housekeeping! Our first job was to set up some tech that would make all five rooms as fresh as possible. OK, so this here is the Aeromax DX55. It's an air purifier. Now, what I've got here is a rainbow breezer, a sort of super air freshener that harnesses the purification qualities of water with the antibacterial qualities of essences. We've got five, so what I'm going to do is set one of these up in each bathroom. I've got the water, I add a sprinkling of an essence. Turn it on. And that should get rid of odious smells. Good. Oh, and there's many D's in the bottom, give it a nice light as well. Excellent. On to the next room. I've not heard or seen Carly for a bit, actually. Maybe she's, uh, maybe she's asleep. Far from it. Carly had moved on to her second room and we were already behind. Ooh, let's let's go. But could our tech pull it back for us? Well, keep watching and you'll find out later in the show. Mind the paint when Otis and I find interesting things uh. in unmade beds. Uh. <laughs> right, it's nearly time for the ads, but hold your horses, because first it's time for one of these.
did you know that there's such a thing as bit rot? It's a slow deterioration in the integrity of data that you're probably storing on a removable hard drive, family holiday photos and the like. If your data is left for too long on a device like this, it can start to decay. So our message to you is clear. Back up every 10 years to stop that cheeky bit rot setting in. If you want to find out more about all the tech featured in the show, or if you need some gadget help, log on to our wonderful website at channel5.com slash gadget show, and you'll find all the info you need. OK, still to come. I'll let you uh, get changed, Thank and you. then I'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah. Otis is in his tighty whities again. We hang out with the YouTube legend that is Charlie McDonnell. Thank you for subscribing, lol. Ah. And we dish the dirt on the latest cleaning tech. Look! Yeah, it's perfect. Look at this. Look, it's marvellous. <laughs> Welcome back to The Gadget Show, where John's still struggling to master his latest chat-up line. What would your definition of fun on a phone be? Oh, <laughs> or are we not allowed to say? <laughs> yeah, all right, John, maybe go with, I've lost my phone number, can I have yours next time? All right, mate? Anyway, it's time to hand over to Amy and Otis, who are engaging in some cutting-edge retail therapy as they check out the future of shopping. I'm in London to try on a new way of shopping for clothing, you know, to see how it fits. Well, I'm looking at a radical new delivery robot. First, though, this is John Bunny. He's the boss of TaylorMade London, who are the first tailors in the UK to use a 3D body scanner rather than a tape measure to take your measurements. Traditional measurements are not very accurate. They're also very slow. Mm -hmm. And by using body scanning, we felt it was a tool that could allow someone to use their measurements and then get something made for them in a very quick and efficient way. The scanner can be installed anywhere and send your measurements to your tailor remotely. But it isn't just for those jammy so-and-sos who can afford a bespoke suit. What body scanning will allow you to do is have a body measurement profile stored in the cloud effectively. And whenever you go and visit any retailer, you tap the garment with your phone, it tells you what size you are based on the body data that's been imported in, and then you walk out the store. Naturally, I needed to test this brand new technology, so, all in the name of research, I asked John to make me a bespoke suit. The first part of the process was traditional enough. Are they still called swatches? They are, yes. Yeah. But then John ushered me into his 3D body scanning den. OK, so I see three cameras here. How does this work? So each column has a camera and a laser. Um, as it moves up and down, we bring all three of those measurements together yes. to create one 3D measurement of your okay. body. The scanner can even pick up on the minute details that only an expert tailor would spot, such as your posture and symmetry. I'll let you uh, get changed Thank and you. Then I'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to squeeze out a few press-ups in here first, I think. It was originally designed for the US Army, so they could quickly measure their soldiers for the right kit. It takes 1,000 measurements in just 10 seconds, and the result is a scarily accurate semi-naked avatar. From here, John can add some personal touches. We can manipulate those measurements. For example, here we've got your, your waistband, yep. and then we can move that depending on where you wear your trousers. What happens next? We'll now send them instantly to our workshop, where your pattern's generated yep. and the fabric's laser cut uh, and then the suits come back here in, in a few weeks. Excellent. Ready to wear. Exactly. So while Otis waited for his accurately measured togs to turn up, I was learning about the ambitiously named Starship. This autonomous delivery robot could mean we never have to traipse to the corner shop again. It was invented by one of the men behind Skype, Artie Heinler. So Artie, here is a Starship. How on earth did you come about inventing this? With this one, really, we want to make it easier for people to receive deliveries and groceries at their doorstep. Okay. So this is a local delivery robot. Inside this prototype is a big space for shopping, plus a battery, nine cameras and a GPS sensor. 
It can deliver autonomously within a three-mile radius. Arty's ambition is for local shops to have their own starships that would deliver their customers shopping, and he's making bold claims about how affordable it would be. The cost of the delivery will be under one pound. Right. Uh, it's possible to have the delivery essentially free, so, so the, the merchant uh, pays for the delivery. Okay. Because the cost is so low. To keep your delivery secure, the compartment is lockable and the cameras would record anyone who tampers with it. How do we know if it's going to run over someone or hit into a human being? It's a safe robot. It has all those sensors and look, when I'm stepping in front of the robot, then it stops. Okay, then it stops. So it is aware of the pedestrians and also trash cans and so yeah, forth. Yeah, okay. It can navigate around those. It might seem a bit far-fetched, but a local trial has been planned in Greenwich early next year. If that proves a success, Artie hopes national shops will want to be involved. So there is a chance that one day your milk will be delivered by Starship. So, back to my threads. My 3D measurements had been laser cut and it was time for me to try on what promised to be a perfectly fitted suit. Brilliant! It felt flawless as soon as I put it on and didn't need any tweaking. Don't forget that bespoke suits like this are just the tip of the iceberg. Very soon, scanners will be affordable enough to install on every high street. Yeah, I feel good already. Yes. Not bad. You look good, don't you? Yeah, thank you. This is exactly how I would like a suit to fit. It's perfect on the shoulders. Yep. Uh, trousers are nice and, and tapered and, and a good length. Yeah, brilliant. And all for just 750 quid. So how prolific do you see these scanners being? Within the next year, you'll, you'll start to see body scanners in, in gyms, yep. um, going into changing rooms in you know, everyday clothing stores. So it seems it won't be long until we all have a perfectly measured digital avatar to help us choose clothes that fit. I like it. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Take Keeping care. Keeping the suit. <laughs> Sound the Gadget Show klaxon. <laughs> Because it's time for the legendary Gadget Show competition. And as always, it's an absolute corker. Every single gadget in this prize fund has been carefully hand-picked. And once you've sat and watched the full list, there's no doubt you'll really, really want every single gadget in there. All killer, no filler. Right, let's get this party started with some top tellies. A 65-inch curved 4K smart TV with a wireless keyboard and a 48-inch 3D TV. And so your new TVs can sing. A 2TB Sky Plus box with a year subscription to Sky's top TV package. A next-gen Dolby Atmos surround sound system, a UView box and a Roku 3 media streamer. And 12 months of Virgin's top speed broadband package available in your area. Next, it's time for some camera gear. A Canon 6D DSLR with lens kit, a Nikon Compact, rugged waterproof camera, a pair of SanDisk Extreme 128GB SD cards and a Polaroid mobile printer. Plus, for capturing those action-packed moments, a GoPro 4 Black Edition with smart remote, LCD backpack and 64GB micro SD card. Right, now it's time for some gaming gear. A PS4 with camera pack and a PlayStation TV. An Xbox One with Connect. Plus, 12 months of gold membership and an Xbox TV tuner. A PS Vita Slim with 16GB memory card. A Nintendo 3DS XL. Games for all the consoles and an Oculus Rift VR headset as soon as possible after launch. Now, I want to talk to you about computers. A Dell XPS 13 Windows 10 laptop with leather sleeve and Office 365 Premium for a year. A 27-inch iMac with Retina 5K display. A Kingston 512GB USB stick. A Kindle Voyage e-reader and an Epson all-in-one wireless printer. Phone time, but not just any old blowers. An iPhone 6S Plus with an Apple Watch Sport to pair it with. And a Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge curved smartphone. And because we want to keep you bang up to date, we've also got a brand spanking new iPad Pro with smart keyboard and Apple Pencil. Next, time to get your groove on with these music gadgets. A Sonos soundbar with subwoofer and three-room wireless music system, a UE Roll waterproof Bluetooth speaker, a year subscription to Spotify Premium, a pair of Bose Bluetooth on-ear headphones and Jabra Sports Coach wireless headphones, plus a DAB Wi-Fi internet radio. Thought that was it? No chance. For your lovely home, we have a Bosch washing machine, a Dyson cordless vacuum cleaner, an app-controlled coffee machine, a Tefal Actifry Plus, a 3D printer, and 
and one month self-storage to put all your prizes in. Finally, kit out your car with an Apple CarPlay in-car entertainment system with Pioneer speaker package. TomTom's Top of the Range Go 6100 sat-nav with world maps. Plus a Garmin dash cam. And get on your bike with a giant road bike with foldable helmet, Garmin bike computer and Blaze laser light. Plus, because we know you're such big fans of the show, we're also giving away four tickets to Gadget Show Live 2016, including premium super theatre seats to be taken on any day during the event between the 31st of March and the 3rd of April at the NEC in Birmingham. Yes, that's right. We've surpassed ourselves yet again. It's another insanely generous prize haul which you're really going to want to get your hands on. But hold on a second. It doesn't stop there. Oh, no, no, no. As the season of joy and goodwill is almost upon us, we're also giving 10 runners-up a Christmas stocking worth over a grand each, including an Amazon Fire 7-inch tablet, a 32-inch Samsung Smart TV, an Xbox One with Kinect, a pair of Beats in-ear headphones, and a GoPro HD action camera. To be in with a chance of winning, all you have to do is text GADGET to 85555 or call 0902 055 5000 or post your name and contact phone number to The Gadget Show, 2206, PO Box 7557, Derby, DE10NP. Text costs £2 plus one message at standard network rate. Calls cost £2 plus your network access charge. Lines close at midday on the date shown on the screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules, go to channel5.com slash win and we'll repeat this information again at the end of the show. Before the break, here's a quick peek at what we reckon is the smartest smartwatch yet. It's called Blocks. It's received over $1.5 million worth of Kickstarter pledges and what makes it special is its modular design. The strap is made up of different modules, which each have their own function, including GPS trackers, NFC payments and air quality monitors. Just buy whatever modules you fancy to create a bespoke device that does exactly what you need. Very nice. After the break, we spend the day with mega successful YouTube funny man, Charlie McDonald. Hey, there we go. A million subscribers. And find out if our cowboy cleaners manage to shine as hotel chambermaids. Or is it chambermen? Housekeeping. Final part of this episode of The Gadget Show. Coming up now, it's our internet star. And this week, it's YouTube veteran Charlie McDonald. Hello, I am Charlie McDonnell. I've been making YouTube videos for eight years now, which basically makes me a YouTube old fogey. So a video blogger, I guess, or a vlogger, if you want to be cool about it, is just somebody who on, just talks to the camera, usually just about their life or kind of whatever it is that they happen to be passionate about. Hello, lovely to see you. Back. For me, it's usually just me reacting to whatever is happening in my life, just my opinions on the world, whatever they might be. Hello, YouTube. I was the first video blogger in the UK to reach a million subscribers. I'm currently just sitting here refreshing my channel page. Hey, there we go, a million subscribers. So I have 2.4 million subscribers, which is pretty nice. Biggest chunk of my audience is 18 to 24 year olds. Uh, it did used to be 13 to 17 year olds, but I've just been making videos for so long now that my audience has basically just gone up a demographic. Thank you for subscribing, lol. Ah. In my YouTube lifetime, I've earned myself around 330 million views, which just is, well, that's just mad, isn't it, really? I make whatever I want to make, I share it with people like you in the hopes that you might like it too, and provided you can put up with the adverts, I get to keep on doing what I love. This is my new camera, just got it recently. This is the Canon C100 Mark II. So this is the microphone I currently use, the Rode NTG2. So I started video blogging back in April 2007. Back then, nobody ever joined YouTube because they wanted to be a YouTube star. Because there was, there was no such thing. There was no money in YouTube at all. The partnership program didn't exist. There was no advertising on YouTube. My name's Mr. C and I'm here to say, if you want to get featured, this is the only way you gotta So this video, how to get featured on YouTube, where I was making fun of the, the types of videos that tended to get featured on the front page of YouTube. Ironically enough, YouTube decided to feature this video. They put it on the front page of UK YouTube. And then from that exposure, my channel has just sort of been steadily growing ever since then. 
this is probably the one that is like the most popular that I'm also the most proud of. You're insufferable. Your acne's terrible. Your sunny disposition is completely unbearable and worse. Nice little bit of uh, simple split screen. On the internet, you're a waste of space. You've got no life. Got a mole on your face. You should take a. They basically they sing at each other about how much they hate themselves, and then they make friends at the end, and it's all nice and happy. You need to be able to love yourself, but not in that way. What way? <laughs> Charlie continues to create his vlog, but has recently started a new YouTube channel. Hello, and welcome everyone to my brand new YouTube show, Serial Time. I'm Charlie. Good morning, I'm Jimmy. And today on the show, we test. The show is essentially a bit of a hybrid between, like, breakfast morning radio and the kind of videos you've come to expect from YouTube vloggers. This is my lovely co-host, Jimmy. Hi. Hi, Charlie. We, we, hi, Jimmy. Uh, we've known each other for a long time. We've both yes. been YouTubing like eight Jimmy. years. Oh, wow. Let's just have a round of applause for that. And uh, Josh, our producer, Mr. Mr. Serial Time, does all of the behind the scenes work. This is the set, our lovely set put together by a production designer. That's a step up from my normal thing. Okay. Right, so we're going to have a run for a Friday then? Yeah. Lovely. 100th episode, wow. Good morning, my little cereal puffs. That's I think the, the main idea thing. behind Cereal Time cereal. is to really kind of become uh, a part of people's TV. lives. Um, I used to really like, you know, watching TV shows in the first thing in the morning, cartoons and that sort of thing, and I don't think that happens as often anymore, at least in my experience. We are now on, Jimmy. Our 100th episode! Oh, where's, my, where's my trumpet? So episodes go up every morning uh, on weekdays. Yeah, we really shelled out. The idea is, you know, we'll have so many episodes of Serial Time, people will watch them for quite a long time and then they'll maybe watch something else. Um, so definitely, like, the format of the show is based off of what we think is going to be popular on YouTube. Cheers for watching, folks. Hope you have a lovely weekend. Uh, YouTube did start as a hobby for me, but it is now my job, and I think it would be silly for me to say it's still just a thing I do for fun because it is also how I pay my rent. I feel like it's it's really hard to it's really hard to know kind of what the longevity of a YouTuber really is. I, I have to have faith that if you want to kind of like keep going, keep pushing yourself, keep uh, keeping YouTube interesting, that it's possible to stay on the website for as long as you want. Right, now it's time to return to this week's Versus Challenge, in which Otis and John use gadgets to take on a professional cleaner. We'd been given five identical used rooms at the Genting Hotel in Birmingham. The challenge? To clean them faster than a professional could service five others. As we rejoin the action, a professional cleaner, Carly, has already started her second run. I can't get over how quickly she did it. Yes. While we've just made our rooms smell nice. Hi, Jasmine. But next we had some tech which we hoped would seriously speed up the vacuuming and mopping bit of the job. Okay, so to clean the carpet in each room, we've got Robot Vat. Now I'm going to be cleaning the floor with the iRobot Brava 380 Robot Controlled Mop. And we've got the iRobot Roomba and the Neato Bot Vat. I lay the mop down and switch it on. Here we go. Next room. We were cleaning the floors of two of our rooms at once. Nice. And away you go. But Carly was already on her third room. So now yes. we've got to get going with the manual stuff. Yes. Housekeeping. Uh, what we're now going to do is tackle the linen. Yes. Yeah. I have a black light Ooh. for showing up the dirt you can't see. Black light is actually ultraviolet light and it's increasingly used as a diagnostic tool in cleaning because certain stains and bodily fluids glow under UV. Well, according to the black light, John, it's clean! Good! So there's no need to change the bed, we're just going to clean it! Marvellous! The Von House 600 watt vacuum cleaner complete with 8 watt UV light. I know it was a gamble not to change the sheets, but this was cleaning against the clock. While John sucked dust from the bed, I banished it from the surfaces using an electric duster. I bet Carly wants one of these. <laughs> After putting enormous care into making the bed look fresh... Oh, yes, the, the um, miniature counterpane. Yeah. It was onto the shower. Already. So this is the sonic scrubber. It's like 
one of those sonic toothbrushes, but for your bathroom. I'd like to take that home and perhaps give my own grouting a mm. going over. And it's really good for getting into grout. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a dirty house. In the corners of your bath. It's cleaner than average. It'll even tackle the toilet. Yes, yeah. and would be even cleaner than average with, with a sonic brush. There you go. Yes, yes. good. Yes. Mm. It'll do the lip, it'll do the rim, it'll do the seat. But it won't do mirrors. For that, I've got the Karsha WV5 Premium Window Vac. You simply spray on the fluid. <laughs> Whoa! Look! Yeah, it's perfect. Look at this. Look, it's marvellous. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. That's really good. The Karsha Premium Window Vac deserves the premium in its name. And even cleaning the bins was easy. I had a biodefense wand which claims to sanitise surfaces in two to three seconds. Mm, that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. On to the next room. And fragrance. Yes. Housekeeping. We were now on a roll. Ah! Where's my vacuum cleaner? <laughs> and tooled up with our tidying tech. Probably good. We swept through the rest of our five bedrooms. Ugh. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. We were male domestic goddesses. At least Otis was. Vongro. Having cleaned up, we went to catch up. Housekeeping. <laughs> with Carly. We're joking, it's oh. us. It's... But there was no trace of her. Has she finished she already? Gone? Carly had already moved on to help clean the rest of the hotel's rooms. And that meant we'd been slower. Ooh, it's rather neat in here, I have to say. But we still had one last chance. If General Manager Nick thought our rooms were cleaner, we could rip victory from the jaws of defeat. The first impressions looks kind of great. Brilliant. However, some little bits in there. Oh. The smearing on the plate, the fingerprints on the toilet. Still got water marks upon the tiles. Yeah, all right. Smears and water marks all the way through at the top and the bottom. The actual dressing of the bed's not finished, it's not tight enough. Psh, in your opinion. In fact, I struggle to see whether you've cleaned this bathroom. Yeah, can we cut to the verdict now? As if that's in any doubt. Well, I hate to break the news to you. But it's definitely Carly. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, Carly, thank you very much for being a great sport. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and Nick, thanks for, uh, some might say, biased judging, but uh, <laughs> thanks <laughs> for honest. No, <laughs> <laughs> very, very thorough. Yeah. Um, yes. Thanks yeah. all the same. <laughs> Cheers, guys. We'd definitely, definitely lost. Great gadgets, but John and I were clearly not up to the task. Which is good news if you use hotels, because you can be sure you'll never get woken up by this. Housekeeping! That's it for now, but if you'd like to watch again or catch up on any of the previous episodes, then log on to Demand 5. But before we go, don't forget your chance to get your gadget-loving mitts on a shed load of tech. And not only are we giving away a mammoth prize bundle, we're also giving 10 runners up Christmas stockings rammed full of epic tech worth a mighty £1,000 each. To enter, all you have to do is text GADGET to 85555 or call 0902 055 5000 or post your name and contact phone number to The Gadget Show 2206 PO Box 7557 Derby DE1 0NP. Text costs £2 plus one message at standard network rate. Calls cost £2 plus your network access charge. Lines close at midday on the date shown on the screen and three days later for post to Entries. The rules go to channel5.com slash win. Goodbye and good luck. And the Gadget Show are back, loading up their sleigh full of all sorts of festive goodies. Don't miss the Christmas special next Monday here on Channel 5 at 7. Next tonight, it's new Ultimate Police Interceptors.